M0FXB, welcome to my channel. Just going to have a go at this uh, mock examination paper for uh, a foundation license. So, first question is the holder of M6XYZ is, and then we have a choice of four. So, a four license holder, no. Scottish intermediate license, no. Foundation license holder in England, yes. I would, I would circle C and D, a pirate station, no. So let's uh, go to question number two. Your CQ call on two meters is answered immediately and you change frequency to a working channel where you hold a 20 minute conversation and then close down. To comply with your license, you must have given your call sign whenever asked three times four times as frequently as practicable so I would say as frequently as practicable which transmission is regarded as transmitting for general reception being overheard by other amateurs you are not talking to talking to a group of more than six amateurs talking to anybody who happens to be listening talking in a language other than English. So, yeah, that's an interesting question. Which transmission is regarded as transmission for general reception? Being overheard by other amateurs you are not talking to. Talking to a group of more than six amateurs. Talking to anybody who happens to be listening talking in a language other than English. So I, I would say C, talking to anybody who happens to be listening. Right, number four. Who may require you to stop transmitting until a fault in your transmitter has been fixed? The person suffering from interference a person authorised by Ofcom, a person authorised by your local council, a member of the RSGB staff. So I would say a person authorised by Ofcom. What power is a foundation licence holder permitted to use on 0 0.137 megahertz band? Well, I'd have to have a chart to look that up, and I haven't got that now. So... Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna have to uh, skip that. Not to 1.37 megahertz band. Um, yeah, that's a funny one. That. So okay, sorry, I can't answer that one without checking. One on which one of the following bands do radio amateurs have primary status? So let's have a look. Again, they give you a chart to answer a question like this in the exam, and you could actually look it up. So I'll have a look. So 50 to 51, 51 to 52, 430 to 431, and 431 to 432. Again, I need the chart, so I have to look it up to be sure. Okay, next one, number seven. Um, a 12 volt mobile transceiver consumes 10 watts on receive and 100 watts on transmit. The highest current drawn will be. Now we need the um, the pipe the the triangle chart. So I would say um, it the. 12 volt, a 12 volt mobile transceiver consumes 10 watts on receive and 100 watts on transmit. The highest current, I'm trying to work out the current, so we need the, the volts and the 100 watt. So I would say it's 100. 100 divided by 12. Uh, have I got a calculator here? Uh, Calcul... Let's see if I can find one. Calculator. Okay. I think it's 100 divided by 12, but we are, again, 
I haven't done this for ages. 100 divided by 12 equals. So I've got 8.33. So um, I'm going to have to go with working out um, the current. So which is amps. So I'm going to have to go with 8.3 amps on that. Message me if I'm wrong. Okay. What is the significant difference between AC and DC? Direct currents are always greater than alternating currents. Direct currents take a long time to change direction. Alternating currents are continually changing direction. Alternating currents have a fixed polarity. So, um, I would say C. Alternating currents are continually changing direction. And, um, yeah, that's my answer. So, um, right. Digital signals are constantly changing in amplitude, frequency, or both. A stream of finite values at a specific sampling interval. Demodulated using a, a frequency discriminator created by a digital to analog converter. So I would say they are created by a, a digital to analog converter. Uh, bottom waveform in the diagram shows an audio wave, a carrier wave, an amplitude, well I would, I would say it's a frequency modulated wave, so I would say the bottom in the diagram is FM. Too much audio gain is likely to cause the transmitter to stop working, increase SWR, interfere with other bands, interfere with adjacent frequencies. So yeah, I would say I would say um, D, interfere with adjacent frequencies. A software defined radio, SDR receiver, uses a balance modulator to recover the original audio. B, digitize incoming signals for processing in software. Does not require an antenna or coax feeder. Is completely immune to infer interference. So I would say digit B digitize incoming signals for processing in software. Which one of the following would not be found in a radio receiver? RF power amplifier, audio amplifier. Um, detector, demodulator, tuning and RF amplifier. So that's a, that's a good one. Hmm. I'd probably go with A, because I think you need an audio amplifier. You need a detector to, you know, demodulate. Um... You need a tune tuning and RF amplifier. I think you do. I think you need that. I think you've got to tune to the right frequency, and you still need to amplify the, um, you know, the received RF, um, so you can hear it. So I think there's no re need for an RF power amplifier, which is basically increasing the power coming out of your radio. So I would say A um, is sorry would not be found in a radio receiver. So I would say A, yeah. Okay. Uh, a vertical half-wave dipole will radiate equally in all horizontal directions. A maximum signal in a vertical direction a maximum signal at right angles to the antenna. A maximum signal of the ends of the antenna. Mm -hmm. e 
I'd have to see a diagram. If you saw that in a diagram, and it's a dipole, you, it would be the line in the middle with a big bubble, um, you know, like that and like that. Um, equally in all horizontal directions. I think that. <coughs> I think A. Right. Next. The connector shown is a PL259 BNC plug, jack plug, USB. So <coughs> I'd say a, B, uh, a BNC. You can tell it just sort of slots on, doesn't it? Turns and... HF propagation is not affected by the sun, the time of day, the day of the week, frequency used. Well, the sun does affect it, the time of day does affect it, and so that would mean the day of week does, so it has to be the frequency used. There you go, D. A VHF transmitting antenna should be located indoors, protected from the rain, wind and sun. Outdoors, as high as practicable, to avoid obstruction. Close to the transmitter, so you can easily adjust it to the correct length. At ground level, to minimise interference. Right, so... Well, no, we don't... A, no, we don't, put, we don't have to put our in, antennas indoors. B... I think B is outdoors as high as practicable to avoid obstruction. I think probably go with B. Close to the transmitter so you can easily adjust it to the correct length. Nah, I don't think that. At ground level to minimise interference. Well, no, definitely not. So I would go to uh, B on that one. A radio amateur's transmission is least likely to cause interference to other amateurs, other radio users, an electric drill, <laughs> an electric security alarm. So I go with the drill. So that is C. Which of the following would not help to reduce uh, interference to local TV receivers? Increasing the distance between the antenna and the houses. Well, I think that would help. Lengthening the transmitter's main cable, no, I think that would make things worse because there'd be more cable that can pick up, um, you know, frequencies. Increasing the height of the antenna, which I suppose, mm, nah, I don't think that's the answer, um, especially with HF. And using balanced antennas for HF. So I would say, yeah, use a balanced antenna for HF. That's what I'd go with. Your neighbour complains that your radio transmissions are interfering with his TV. You should. A. Tell him that it is not possible because you're working to the conditions of your licence. I'd say no, that's not correct. Offer to make a log of your transmission time and ask him to note the times of any interference for comparison. Yeah, I think that's quite good. Ring the local authority and ask for advice. Suggest that he buys a new TV. 50-inch plasma. <laughs> so I would say B. Offer to make a log of your transmission times and ask him to note the times of any interference comparison. Once you have contacted another station on VHF FM calling channel, you should remain on the frequency until another station wishes to use it. Remain on the frequency as long as the contact takes. Ask if the frequency is clear. Change frequency to a suitable clear channel. Once you have contacted another I think... Ask if the frequency is clear. C. B. So, sorry, question 22. Band plans are used because using them is a condition of the license. They help prevent on air abuse. They enable efficient use of the band for different modes. They are required 
for radio competitions. So I would say they C they enable efficient use of the band for different modes. Digital voice radios DV may have the owner's call sign embedded in the configuration, can be used to contact all other types of amateur radios, automatically check to see if a channel is in use, cause more interference than SSB. So I would say A, they may have their owner's call sign embedded in the configuration. If you think about C4 FM and D star, and I suppose even DMR, you've got to put in your call sign and your, you know, your DMR number. Uh, with C4 FM, it wants your, uh, it definitely wants your call sign, or it won't work on C4 FM. The mains power switch to the shack should be out of reach to younger children for safety reasons. Key operated to prevent use by non-licensed persons. Switched off at all times, or D in a clearly marked position. So I would say D. When using a solder run, you should have a responsible person nearby to help. Uh, wear glasses or eye protection. Ensure that tools are stored in a locked toolbox. Ensure that the circuit you are working on is earthed. So I would say wear glasses or eye protection. 26. When working a portable field station, feeder cables must always be as long as possible. Located away from overhead power cables, run along the ground to the antenna mast as short as possible. I would say located away from overhead power cables, which is B. Now, all right, we actually get the answers here at the end. <laughs> So I should have um, made a note of w what we were answering um, each time on a piece of paper. And then I could have compared how many I got right or wrong. So, okay, well, it's still, uh, this is, if you're uh, non-licensed, or even if, you, even if you just want to refresh your knowledge just from a foundation level, um, why not try out one of these mock exams on the RSGB website? I will... Uh, add the link so 73 thanks for watching my channel and uh, please uh, remember to subscribe and like and i will talk to you on air 73 again